What can human engineers learn from slime mold? If you are given a simple maze to get through, it'll take you no longer than a minute to figure out the best pathway to get out. But you're a human being with 86 billion neurons. A single-celled organism wouldn't stand a chance, but somehow, Physarum polycephalum, otherwise known as slime mold, managed to take over Tokyo through the subway system. We will learn more about this later in the video and hear from Paul Stamets, a mycologist who is an advocate for the benefits of medicinal fungi and mycoremediation. First, we must explore mushroom intelligence and how fungi work. Mushrooms and other kinds of fungi have long been associated with superstition and regarded with a little bit of fear, given how some of them are poisonous and some contain psychedelic properties. The overnight appearance of toadstool ring formations, in some cases, could worry even the most grounded individual who doesn't believe in fairy tales of witches dancing in mushroom rings, or the superstition that stepping into one turns you into a frog. The reason mushrooms can create these formations is that they engage in decision-making, both with each other and individually, and possess short-term memory. But before we can explore what intelligence here looks like, we need to consider its meaning. Consciousness implies awareness, and awareness is the evidence that an organism is able to respond to or is sensitive to outside stimuli. There is definitely a hierarchy here. All organisms are sensitive to outside stimuli, but they are not all necessarily conscious in the way we understand. Until recently, consciousness was something scientists deemed only humans and animals had, excluding other forms of life from this class. That doesn't mean other organisms lack consciousness. It just means that it's impossible to identify a threshold level of awareness or responsiveness that separates conscious animals from the unconscious. In an interview with Scientific American, Merlin Sheldrake talks about the definition of intelligence, saying, Classical scientific definitions of intelligence use humans as a yardstick by which all other species are measured. From this perspective, intelligence requires at least a brain and, more usually, a mind. Because fungi, like plants, don't look or behave like us, or have brains, they have long fallen well short of these anthropocentric requirements. Thankfully, over the past few decades, the concept of intelligence has deepened and expanded. There are different versions of consciousness across a continuum of species, from apes to amoebas. That doesn't necessarily mean they all lead equally complex and emotionally rich lives, although fungi do appear to come rather close. So, how do fungi operate? Mushrooms are actually the reproductive organs produced by fungi that spend a majority of their lives below ground as microscopic filaments called hyphae. The hyphae branch out to form colonies called mycelia, which spread out in three dimensions within soil and leaf litter, absorbing water as it feeds on roots, wood, and bodies of dead insects and animals. Each hypha is basically a tube filled with pressurized fluid, and this extends to the tips. The thing that allows them to elongate and branch out further is called the vesicle, and its motion is guided along an interior system of rails by proteins that act as the motor. The speed at which it elongates, the direction, and the positions of the branches are all determined by patterns of vesicle delivery. This growth mechanism responds, second by second, to even the smallest changes in temperature, water availability, and new opportunities and obstacles created by the surrounding environment. And in the event an obstacle is met, hyphae have the ability to detect ridges on surfaces, grow around the obstacle, and deploy a patch and repair system if anything is damaged. These actions draw upon an array of protein sensors and signaling pathways that link the external physical or chemical inputs to cellular response. The electrical activity of the cell is also sensitive to changes in the environment. How voltage behaves in the hyphal membrane is actually similar to nerve impulses in animals, but we have yet to fully understand their function in fungi. Hyphae react to confinement too, which means if you give them a small space to grow in, they alter their growth rate, becoming narrower, and they branch out less frequently. The fungus also adapts to the texture of the soil and the anatomy of plant and animal tissues as it pushes ahead and forages for food. Their functioning may be different from how we think or process information, but the fundamental working that allows a hypha to process information and make decisions are similar to how we adapt to our environment and make adjustments. 
Basically, we receive certain information from our surroundings and either change our approach accordingly or respond to it. And that's exactly what a study on Physarum polycephalum revealed. They, they did several experiments. The, the fun, most fun one is they, um, they designed uh, a nutrient, um, uh, basically a nutrient like maize, um, replicating um, Tokyo in the Japanese subway system. And uh, so they started with Tokyo and they put uh, oats, which is a nutritional source. They inoculated what is on this basically an agar map um, with all the major cities, the nodes around Tokyo. After mapping out the city in oat flakes, the scientists allowed the slime mold to grow. At first, it was in a random pattern, as if it was just exploring the area as you would if you were out hunting. But almost two days later, something happened. And then after about 28 hours, it reorganized itself in the most efficient way possible and reorganized the Japanese subway system in a more efficient manner than it's designed today. The network looked nearly identical to the rail system in Tokyo, with a larger number of strong, resilient tunnels connecting centrally located oat flakes. Turns out that a railway network that took countless hours and experienced engineers to design took the slime mold almost no time or effort. Every day, subway systems and rail networks in major cities have to meet the demands of mass transport, ferrying millions to and from work or school in a fast and efficient way. The slime mold has no central brain or attachment to the problem it is solving, but it is producing a structure that could very well solve our problems. This isn't limited to finding efficient rail or road systems. Co-author of this study, Mark Fricker, pointed out that this system could be useful for creating networks that would have to change over time, like in the case of short-range wireless systems of sensors that provide early warning for floods or fires. Because these sensors are destroyed in the event of a natural disaster, the network would have to efficiently reroute information quickly. This sort of decentralized, adaptable network would also be important for soldiers on battlefields, or swarms of robots exploring environments where humans cannot go, like radioactive areas. This model could even aid in medical science, helping us answer how blood vessels grow to support tumors, since the way tumors work is to start out as dense and unstructured before refining their connections to become more efficient. Though our manner of intelligence may differ, there is no denying that the slime mold possesses its own kind of intelligence that helps it navigate the world far more efficiently than we are. Fungal expressions of consciousness are simple, and experiments on them have made the space for the study of behavior within the broader field of research on the biology of fungi more exciting for mycologists. Being important players in the ecology of the planet, these fascinating organisms are not only helpful in sustaining a functional biosphere, but they could also help us solve many of the mysteries concerning our environment and the inner workings of our bodies.